Jesus, thank you, Father. We worship you, we exalt your name. We give you glory and adoration. Blessed be your holy name for this hour, for this session, for this minute. We thank you for today. We thank you for the gift of life. We exalt you, Lord Jesus. We bless you forevermore. You are our God, our King, our healer, our deliverance, our hope, our trust, and our confidence. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for you never fail, you never disappoint. You remain the same forever. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Thank you, Father, for showing us your mercy and your compassion. Thank you for the understanding and the wisdom you have given to us. And we say, blessed be your holy name, for in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Brethren, I welcome us to this uh, afternoon, uh, morning session to hear the word of God again, to refresh our mind, our memories based on the teachings of the Lord and what he has instructed us to do. Amen. So without wasting time, because we will be reading a little bit long chapter this after, this morning. Our topics this morning says temptation and idolatry. Temptation and idolatry. It's what we'll be talking about this morning. So for us to get a better understanding, I will want us to read the whole of First Corinthians. Chapter 10 from verse 1 to 33. And he said, Moreover, brethren, I would not I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our father were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and we were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? For, and did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And the rock was Christ. Amen. But five, say, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. In verse 7, neither be ye idolaters as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. In verse 8, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed, and fell one day three and twenty thousand. In verse 9, neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and they were destroyed of serpent. In verse 10, neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the, dest of the destroyer. 11. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. 13. Then had no temptation take you but such as coming 
to man. But God faithful we, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but we with the temptation also make a very way to escape. But ye be able to bear, bear it. 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, free from idolatry, I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. 16. The cup of blessings which we bless is not the communion of the blood of Christ. The bread which we break is not the communion of the body of Christ. For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. 18. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifice, partakers of the altar. 19. What say I then? The idols is anything or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols in anything. But I say that the mighty, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And would not that ye should have fellowship with the devils. 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devil. Do not provoke the Lord to jealousy. Are we stronger than he? 22. 23. All things are lawful for me, for me, but all things are not expedient. Expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Twenty-four. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's word. Twenty-five. Whosoever is sold in the sh- in the shambles, that it asking no question for conscience' sake. Twenty-six. For the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. 27. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is said before you, it asking no question for conscience sake. But if any man says unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for the sake that showeth it, and for the conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. 29. Conscience, say, I say not thy own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judge of another's man's conscience? 30. For I by grace be a partaker, why I am evil spoken of for that for which I gave thanks. 31. Whether themselves ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. 32. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. 33. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. May the Lord bless his word in our heart, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible passage is a bit uh, lengthy, it's a bit long. I I read it also that uh, we could understand because two things are practically, or it's being grouped or categorized into uh, two parts. From the first part, from verse 1 to 13, we see it, it was, Apostle Paul was practically warning or was giving warning to them, just the same way we are being warned today by you know reading this scripture this morning. While the other part of it is encouragement, we see Apostle Paul also encouraging encouraging them. It's a word of an encouragement to us. So in this case, Paul is warning the the, the Corinthians about adultery, uh, uh, the worshiper of other gods instead. Of worshiping the one true God, which is our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We just celebrated his resurrection a few weeks back. So it may appear at, at, at times 
The idolatry is dead. Sometimes we feel that mm, it's nothing, it's not, it's not really happening, but it is still happening. Amen. Now, idolatry in other words, when we talk about idolatry, a lot of us think it's uh, fornication. It is where we, you know, uh, 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 sleep with either other people's men or other people's women that is just idolatry. No, idolatry is what we, 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 we put first, something we worship, something we put in the place of God or that is taking the place of God in our life. Sometimes it could be money. Sometimes it could be our career. Sometimes it could be our business. Sometimes it could even be our children. Sometimes it could be our husband. Sometimes it could be ourselves. Sometimes it could be selfish interest. Sometimes anything that we cannot practically do without, anything that now occupies the place of God in our heart, automatically it becomes an adultery. And this is why Apostle Paul is now writing to the Corinthians this morning that they should be aware about those things. They should be aware about those things. When he said in verse 7, Neither be ye idolaters as we are, as we are some of them, as it is written, that the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Then also in verse 8, we also see, See, neither let commit fornication as some of them committed, and fall in, uh, and fall in one day, three and twenty thousand. You see now, and when we keep on reading it, we see the warning was the warnings are so much. So Apostle Paul, just the same way he warned the Corinthians, the same way is also warning us today. What is that thing that you have, you know, taken or that is taking the place of God in your life? What is that thing that is taking uh, uh, you have taken so serious? Not minding the one that the teachings of God. What is that thing that takes more of your time? What is that thing you pay homage to? What is that thing that you are ready to give your life to instead of giving your life to Christ? This is what this passage is warning us from this morning. Hallelujah. Now, Apostle Paul is encouraging them to put God first and then encourage them in verse 13. In verse 13, we, we also read, There had no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will be so far you to be tempted above that you are able. But we, but we with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. You see, God can never give us a temptation or will not allow us to experience some temptation that we cannot overcome. He will always make a way out, no matter how, how, how heavy, no matter how big, no matter how strong it seems to be. As far as God is concerned, as far as we trust God enough, as far as we believe God enough, as far as we call on Him enough, He will always make a way out for us. I pray that the God will make a way out for us as we submit to His authority, as we submit to His teaching, as we submit to His word, as we submit to His laws in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the encouragement, we see the other part where He was encouraging them. Apostle Paul encouraged people to stand firm in their, uh, 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 in their com uh, commitment. He asked us to stand firm in our commitment to the Lord and not to be, to be, to be wavered, not to be shaken. For the temptation, for the temptation is, not to, uh, is not too great to bear. It's not too much to bear. Hallelujah. This is an, uh, an important uh, uh, subject to cover not only to encourage the moment of of temptation but also to make people aware of potential idols in their lives that's why i ask in the beginning in the beginning what is that thing that is your idol in your life what is that thing that has become an idol in your family what is that thing that takes a lot of your time that makes you not to go to god that distract you from the presence of God, automatically those things, they become an idol. And Apostle Paul, just as he warned the Corinthians, is also warning us today, 
we should be mindful and be careful about those things because probably they might they will lead us to hell fire they will lead us nowhere and they cause distraction they cause pains they cause disappointment they cause failure and they separate us they bridge gap between us and the love that christ has for us so we should be aware amen now temptation no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man no temptation that overtakes you that is not common to man it's not possible it's not it's not existing does not exist god is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability but with the temptation he will also provide the way to escape just as we read before as we have seen before he always provide a way we could see the story of Job. I love that man so much. Despite all that he passed through, despite the hard time, despite the ordeal, you know what it means for those who have lost their loved one or their children, for someone children to die, you know, at one, just one day, for someone business to collapse just one day, for someone to be afflicted with sickness just one day. Not that this man has done anything because his faith was tried. Many of us, when our faith are tempted, are tried, will begin to grumble, will begin to murmur, will begin to run away, will begin to complain. But this man, despite all the odds, he keep trusting in God, he keep believing in God, he keep he stand firm with God, believing and hoping that one day everything will turn around. But we see how God changed his story. We see how God turned everything around. Even when friends begin to mock at him, even when the wife even asks, okay, why can't you call this God? You are still called believing on this man that have, you know, uh, uh, forsaken you. But he keep on believing in God. He focus. We have to be focused. We have to be ready because it is a temptation that comes our way that practically promotes us to the next level. When you do not undergo any test or any exam, or you are looking for a job, you do not go for an interview. You can't you don't expect that expect that job to just come to you like that in a platform a platter of gold. So in any of a man again or man profit, there is always a sacrifice. Every big man, rich man you see out there, there are a lot of sacrifice they have paid. Some are good, while some are evil. But there must be a sacrifice. Are you ready to pay that sacrifice? But be rest assured. No matter the sacrifice you pay, as far as God is involved, as far as you are not paying out of your own will, but as is trusted by the Holy Ghost, and is for the glory of God, you will be rewarded, will be rewarded abundantly. And uh, we, will not, uh, uh, we will not die, we will not be put to shame in this process of this trial. And may the Lord bless His word in our heart, in Jesus' name. And I pray this hour, that whatever that has become idols in our life, that God will take them away and let the light of God continue to shine in our heart, in our home, in our business, in our family, wherever we may go, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, whatever that is separating us from, the, from, from God, whatever that is making us not to trust in God, whatever that is making us not to believe in God, whatever that is making us to have double-minded or having double mind that God will take it away from us in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that God will continue to empower us and give us the wisdom to follow him diligently. I pray that God will continue to sustain us. Every temptation that will take our life, that God will not allow us to experience it because he already promised it in the mighty name of Jesus. I will pray that whatever that troubles our heart, whatever that troubles you, whatever that makes you to have double mind, today God is taking it away and God is changing your story, is changing my story in the mighty name of Jesus. And I speak to somebody under the sound of my voice this morning. I see God touching your life. I see God touching your destiny. I see God touching, changing your story. I see everything turning around for your good in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you express an encounter that will change your life. And it's counter that will cause testimony, that will cause people to celebrate with you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare and I declare upon our life, whatever that is heavy in our heart, God will take it away today in the mighty name of Jesus. Every heavy load in our heart, in our mind, in our body, God will take it away in the mighty name of Jesus. 
that tears that evil that tears you have been crying that cry you have been crying in the secret in the open some have used it to mock at you some have used it to laugh at you today god is wiping away that tears in the mighty name of jesus because the lord is on the throne it is well with us it is well with our business it is well with our, our children it is well with our marriage it is well with our job our finances our destiny our calling our, our ministries in the mighty name of jesus I decree Isaiah 60, verse Isaiah 60, the whole of Isaiah 60 upon our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever we go, let the light of God continue to shine in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God will make a way for you, will make a way for me, will make a way for each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, faithful God. For in Jesus' most precious name, we are prayed. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Please, let's keep on studying the Word of God. Whatever we are seeing today, whatever happens in our life, everything are in the Word of God. So don't stop studying. Don't stop studying. Don't stop studying. Let me tell you one thing. Good thing about studying is that as you are studying, you are communicating with God. God is communicating with you. For those of us that always ask, how do we know if God is talking to you? As you are reading the word of God, God is communicating with you and you are communicating with God. At the same time, you are praising him, you are worshipping him. So when we are studying, we do a lot of combination of, of things. So don't stop studying. Don't stop studying your Bible. When you do, you will see those questions, those things that look strange to you became, become open. So make the word of God your your priority make it your business make it your work and as we do may the lord bless us and keep us in jesus name amen let's share the grace in fellowship with the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now forevermore amen surely god goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever Amen. Shalom. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ma, for, for always being here. God will continue to empower you. And uh, this ministry I called you for will continue to give you the wisdom and all the necessary materials to carry it to the next level. And they will pray that your labor will never be in vain. God who is a rewarder we reward you as you have brought the gospel to our doorsteps in Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom.